You're watching Bears Now. I am your host, Harrison Graham, as always, here to break down the latest Chicago Bears news and rumors. We have an injury update on Larry Borum. Stay tuned for that. But first, we'll get into our Bears rumors roundup here on a Tuesday. So let's go ahead and do it. How about this? Do the Bears consistently get out coached? Ah, three smoking Jays. I would say in most cases that is the case, uh, especially uh, in the last couple of weeks. There's no doubt about that, and especially against good teams. This team definitely consistently gets out coached. This comes from our good pal Matt Forte, former Chicago Bears running back. Uh, he pointed out to three patterns about how this team gets out coached. Uh, pattern number one, never outmatched talent-wise across the board except for on the O-line. Some might not like it, but hey, it's the truth. So he's basically saying the talent's not the problem, the coaching is. Pattern number two, large majority of first-round picks never pan out uh, or contribute early due to injury or just not good enough, not hitting on premium draft picks. Okay, pattern number three. Uh, no continuity, high rate of turnover, in, uh, both in players, coaches, and GMs. In only eight years with the Bears, I experienced three head coaches, five offensive coordinators, and three different general managers. I'll say this. There's a lot of truth to what Matt Forte is saying, I, I, I got to say, and he, and he specifically pointed out to this team being outcoached and unprepared way too often in big games. And can we really disagree with him? Is he wrong? I think he's making a lot of good points at the end of the day. Matt Forte just speaking the truth about the Bears. Is Matt Nagy a nice guy? Yeah. Does he have some decent qualities? Sure. Does he get out coaching big games? Yes, <laughs> he does. He doesn't win big games. And at the end of the day, coaching is very important in those big time matchups. So should the Bears fire Matt Nagy? That's the question. And by the way, uh, thoughts go out to him as he continues to battle COVID, but this is a separate issue. Should they fire him? Type Y for yes, type in for no. Should the Chicago Bears fire their head coach? Give me a Y for yes, or you can go ahead and give me an N for no. My main point about coaches is that the really good ones give you an edge on Sundays. Something they're doing during the game makes a difference in the outcome. What does Matt Nagy do on Sundays that helps the Bears, you know, get an extra three points here or make a stop there or do this or do that. What does he do? He doesn't call plays anymore. Uh, he's not a good uh, time management coach. His challenges tend to be bad. So what edge does he give you on Sundays? He's a decent rah-rah guy. I guess that's somewhat valuable, but I don't think he brings you nearly enough uh, to make a critical difference in the game versus, you know, other big time coaches over the years. So I, I just I think he's very middle of the pack. He's won more games than he's lost. But think about the big games over the years. How many has he won? Not many of them at the end of the day. You look at the upcoming schedule here for Chicago. Week eight against the 49ers coming up on Sunday. That's obviously a monumental game for Nagy, even though he won't even be coaching in it, I don't believe, since he has COVID. Week nine at Pittsburgh on Monday Night Football. Then the week 10 bye before Baltimore and at Detroit. So you look at these next two games, you lose them both. Could there be a midseason firing? That's not the Bears' M.O., but maybe this could be the time. These next two weeks are critical for him. Even though he's not coach, probably not going to coach on Sunday, uh, he really needs the Bears to win this game to help out his job status. Uh, I don't think uh, – him or the Bears losing this game, him there or not, is going to help his cause. So you really need to win these two games against San Francisco and Pittsburgh, two winnable games if you are the Chicago Bears and especially if you are Matt Nagy. So Forte going after him, saying he gets out coached a lot. And you know what? I can't really argue with what he's saying. By the way, if you want more Bears videos throughout the NFL season, this is the channel for you. Make sure you guys subscribe, youtube.com slash Bears now. And on top of that, the Bears play the Niners this week. I'm trying to catch the 49ers report and sub, so let's go ahead and subscribe and make sure we can out-sub Chase and the Niners. Okay, let's keep it moving here on our Bears rumors roundup. Are the Chicago Bears going to be sellers at the trade deadline? This one is going to be two smoking Jays. Uh, I think it should be your three or four. Like, if I'm in charge, I'm selling and most likely if I'm Chicago, maybe this a win on Sunday could slightly change uh, that thinking if you get back to four and four. But I, 
I, I would lean to sell if, if I were in charge, but I'm going to put it in the two smoking Jays. People are talking uh, uh, level there. Adam Johns of the Athletic uh, said that the Bears should be sellers. Now, he didn't report whether they would be or not. He just believes they should be, as do I. Uh, and let's be honest, this team needs draft capital. They don't have their first-round pick next year due to the Justin Fields trade, which I still stand behind. But uh, it would be nice to get more picks back, right? To Even if you can't replace that first, can you get an extra day two pick to help give you some more premium draft capital? I will say this. The decision-making over the next week from Ryan Pace could tell us how hot his seat actually is. If they let Pace trade another you know, second or third round pick to bring a player in here, that probably tells me he's not going anywhere. So the way the Bears operate over the next week could tell us what his job status is. The Bears should sell, let's be honest. I mean, could this team make the playoffs? Yes, I think the sixth and seventh seed could be up for grabs, although with New Orleans winning on Monday Night Football, they're now four and two. So they're, they're in a pretty good spot for that sixth seed. Top five are pretty much locked in whatever order between Arizona, Green Bay, Dallas. Uh, who am I missing? Uh, Marsh in the NFC. Tampa Bay, and then did I say Green Bay? I don't know. There's five teams that are clearly at the top of the NFC. New Orleans is that sixth team, and then uh, it's like, Five other teams in the mix, including the Bears, to get that last seed. The Rams are the other team I didn't mention. Uh, they're in that mix as well. So, realistically, even if you make the playoffs, the point I'm making is that top five is in a class of their own. This team would have to improve dramatically uh, to make the – not just to make the playoffs, but to even win a playoff game. That's why they should sell and start looking ahead to 2022. Do you think Ryan Pace is on the hot seat? Type one for yes, type two for no. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I don't really think it's that hot. I hope it's warm. I'm not a huge fan of Pace. He's done some good things, but I think we'll find out more over the next this next week based on the Bears' activity. Shout out to BetUS, our sportsbook partner here at Chicago Bears. Now, we've got a great deal for you guys, so stay tuned. Go to chatsports.com slash bears. Use our promo code BEARDOWN. It's all one word, BEARDOWN. Once you go to chatsports.com slash bears, make sure you deposit 100 bucks. That way you can get 125 for free with that 125% deposit bonus. This is kind of interesting. The game this weekend, 49ers, three-and-a-half-point favorites at Soldier Field. That's how little Vegas thinks of the Bears right now, and that's with a 49ers team, guys, that has a lot of injuries and has lost four games in a row. And they're still road favorites at Chicago. As bad as the Bears have been, I kind of like their chances this weekend. Plus, the over-under less than 40 points. I know this offense stinks, but, man, I, I, that's a very low number. If you're feeling confident about betting on either of those numbers or any other NFL games, get going with BetUS, chatsports.com slash bears. Use that promo code BEAR down. So I say the Bears should sell. I think these are some players that you could see get moved before the deadline. I'll add Andy Dalton verbally in there as well. Uh, I think one of him or Nick Foles could be on the move. We'll see if it happens. Allen Robinson, I think, is the big name right now. We'll get to him in a second. Akeem Hicks possibly as well. Obviously, he's been banged up with that groin injury. And then uh, Tayshawn Gibson, who's also banged up. Uh, he shouldn't be starting here anyway. So if a team needs a, sa a veteran safety and wants to throw the Bears a day three pick, I certainly would be up for that. I would trade Allen Robinson. I can't believe I've come to this conclusion, but the reality is him and Justin Fields don't seem to be on the same page. There's a lot of room uh, to grow between those two. And if, if Ryan Pace and the Bears aren't going to pay A-Rob, which what evidence do we have that they will, then you might as well trade and get something for him. I, w I would have still preferred to pay him and kept him long term, but I think we've p that ship has sailed. I don't think A-Rob cares about being here at this point. Uh, he's not having a good year this year with Fields at quarterback. You look at the numbers, they're not good. Uh, 23 catches for 250 yards and two touchdowns uh, with an average of just under 11. That's not, you know, no big plays overall uh, for Robinson. He, they don't seem to be on the same page a lot of the time. Uh, and by the way, he said today part, he thinks a lot of that is due to Fields not getting reps with the ones during training camp. That's yet another indictment of this Bears coaching staff led by Matt Nagy. It was criminal that Fields did not get hardly any work with the ones during training camp because that's when you get the, that's when you build that chemistry. It's hard to build that on the fly during the season because you don't really have a lot of hardcore practices during the season on an NFL team. I've been at NFL practices uh, during seasons. They're out there in shorts and t-shirts and they're not doing that much. That That's the reality of the situation. So would I trade A-Rob? Yeah, I think I would at this point. New hashtag. No more sign AR, no more extend AR. It's trade AR for now. Get that hashtag flowing. If you want to trade Allen Robinson, type trade AR down in the comments. I, I like a Allen Robinson. I think he's a good player, but 
if you're not going to sign them long term, you might as well get something for them. So, hashtag trade AR. Keep it rolling here. Justin Fields needs more play action. Bear down for Spoken Jays. Yes, I mean, this should be true for all quarterbacks, but especially with a young rookie quarterback uh, because play action deceives defenses and the numbers don't lie, guys. Look at his passing stats this year. Play action versus non-play action. Let's just compare it stat by stat, okay? Completion percentage, 65.6 .6 to 54.5. When it's play action, 65.6. .6. When it's non-play action, 54.5. That's a massive difference, okay? The yards, I don't really care because there's been more non-play non action snaps. Touchdown to, inter uh, to interception ratio, 1 to 0 for play action, 1 to 6 on non-play action. That's a big difference. QB rating, 99 uh, out of 158 on uh, play action. Pretty good, above average. Uh, QB rating when it's not play action, poor. Probably the worst in the league at 49.7. But you look at the percentage of plays, less than 25% are on play action and 75% uh, are non-play action. This note came from Daniel Jeremiah uh, on, uh, on Twitter earlier, uh, I believe on Monday. Uh, we just kind of showed you those stats on that other graphic, but I wanted to give kudos to him. He had these numbers here. I think they might be next-gen stats. I <laughs> Like, how do you look at these numbers and say, oh, yeah, we're only going to run play action a quarter of the time? Shocker, play action works, guys. Obviously, you can't run it 100% of the time, but you can run it 40 to 50. Like, and especially when you run the football well. There, it, it, it's not true that you need to run the ball effectively for play action to work, but I do think if you do run the ball well, which the Bears do, it can only help your play action game, yet the Bears don't run it. It makes no sense whatsoever. Less than 25% play action is criminal. It's bad coaching. It's coaching malpractice. It's not understanding the strengths of your quarterback. And if you don't understand what Justin Fields' strengths are, despite trading up for him, despite spending future draft capital on him, then what are you doing as a franchise? Oh, you know, Mel Kuyper has told us Fields is talented, so we'll draft him. What? Like, that, that? you might as well be conceding that you don't understand who he is, and that's a big problem. Run more play action. It works, and it especially helps young quarterbacks out. Do you still believe in Justin Fields? Because I definitely do. I think this coaching staff continues to let him down. Type B for believe in him. Type D for don't. It's way – you guys saying, oh, he's a boss, bring Trubisky back, this, this and that. Guys, this staff is not helping him whatsoever. I'm typing my B for believe. You can type your B or your D. Let us know down in the comments. All right, let's get to that Larry Borum injury update here. Uh, is he returning? It appears so, as Jason Peters said earlier today, that Borum will return this week. By the way, why is Jason Peters announcing injuries for the Bears but not Matt Nagy? That's just – it's happened multiple times this season. Very possible he could start at right tackle on Sunday with the tackle situation for the Bears at this point in time. He, of course, has been on injured reserve since week one when he uh, had that high ankle sprain uh, during that week one game against the L.A. Rams. Uh, this is a nice development, right? I mean, you're getting him back just in time uh, considering where you've been the last uh, – you know, the last couple of weeks, especially this past week at right tackle. I think there's a real chance that uh, that uh, he could start at right tackle because this is a very fluid situation at that position with the amount of injuries. you got Elijah Wilkinson on the COVID list now. Uh, if Borm has a good week of practice, if they activate him from IR and he's ready to go, I think he starts at right tackle. It's going to be him or Alex Bars at the end of the day. It can't be Latavius Simmons, I'll tell you that right now, because that was an absolute disaster. Uh, think about the Bears' offensive tackle situation here, okay? Uh, Tevin Jenkins, he remains on IR. By the way, I want to verbally mention this. Jason Peters said he thinks Jenkins could return in the next few weeks, so that's a positive development, maybe after the bye. Uh, Borum's still on IR technically, but looks like he's going to return soon. Jermaine Ifedi, he's on IR with the knee. I don't think he'll be back this week. Uh, Elijah Wilkinson is uh, on the COVID list. Uh, he went on the COVID list on game day on Sunday, so chances are he won't be cleared for this game. I think Larry Borum could start at right tackle this week, so... That's, you know, a positive development if he's ready to go. I was impressed with him in training camp and in the preseason. So uh, maybe uh, he gives you some stability at that position at right tackle. And maybe, just maybe, Larry Borum uh, is one of your starting tackles long term. We'll just have to wait and see how it all plays out.